Today on the Dirt Bike Track, we learned having psychic powers is better than having real parents, but not being alive is better than having psychic powers. And speaking of fortune telling, I see an intro in your future listeners. I'm Nicole. And this is a Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. <laughs> Yes, guys, like I didn't say, my name is James. And to all the Chicago Public Libraries, if you have a volume two of something, have a volume one of it as well, okay? I can't be <laughs> running around comic book shops trying to find all of The Road to No Man's Land volume one in single <laughs> issues. Because all you have is volume two of Road to No Man's Land, okay? You should have... Why isn't anyone working there have a completionist a attitude? And not completionist like the guy who just scammed a lot of stuff out of donation money. Not that completionist. I mean the word in general, not the completionist. A completionist. And who, guys, talking about coming to completion, we gotta introduce our another co-host. Because that's how we complete this introduction, okay? <laughs> that's how things happen. You thought I was going to go dirty with it, but no. The 2024, that uh, bodily function no more. Thank you. Thank you. And that bodily function is love. Let me introduce my co-host, the blood letter for love, the emissary of hell, Nickel the Bricks, DarlingHomebody.com, Jakeis. Oh, hi. How are you, my queen? I'm good. How are you, my queen? I'm great. There you go, motherfucker. You're oh, grand. Okay. Slam. <laughs> Ting. <laughs> Would you rather eat a Grand Slam or just a, a bunch of pancakes from McDonald's? Pancakes, because a Grand Slam would give me acid reflux real okay. bad. All right. So the, the gluten's fine with you now. Doesn't that also have pancakes? But Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're so like... So it wouldn't matter. So instead of getting shot and stabbed, you're only getting shot. Yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> Been there, done that. Boy, oh boy, was that a trolley conundrum if I've ever had one. Bunch of tweens came up to me on the street and said, Mister, give us your money or we're going to shoot and stab you. And I say, what if I give you all my money plus like other stuff and you just do one of those? And they're, they're like, well, no, we're like, it's a, give us your money or we'll shoot and stab you. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. So I don't need to be both. And they said, no, you put it on the table. Give us everything <laughs> and we'll flip a coin, oh, shoot no. or stab. <laughs> and uh, good thing, children are terrible shots. So I was able to hop yeah. on my Razor scooter and they were just like, <laughs> got out of there scot-free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It was a good time. Not a scot inside. Uh-huh. Zero scot. Zero scotch. scots given. Uh-huh. Oh, man. I wish I was zero scotch. Because then I just have <laughs> Irish blood pumping in me, baby. Get that Scottish shit out of here. Okay. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I got some Irish whiskey pumping in me, I tell you that. Hell you yeah. Know, hell yeah. I don't care about all these other British Isles sections, okay? <laughs> I don't want any Welsh in me. I don't want any uh, <laughs> Scottish in me. Don't want any English in me. Irish all the way. Like a goddamn shake right now at McDonald's. Nicole? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you like to introduce our guest or would you like to talk a little up front? Okay, I just have a thing real Okay, quick. what's up? Okay, but now I feel like it's dumb and I shouldn't say it. Say I don't it. Know. Oh, yeah, okay, because what I, I realized, just said was smart. I realized that, <laughs> okay, it's boring is what I'm worried what about. What I just said, what I, uh, up for debate on what I just said. Okay, I realized why I think I'm not funny it's because like i mainly just hang out with you and when we joke with each yeah. other usually it's like oh how can we escalate this and make it funnier like mm -hmm. it's usually like us workshopping bits yeah <laughs> so we don't really like just laugh like i'm always surprised when you just laugh at a joke that i yeah make. because we're we've acclimated to each other so it's harder to make us laugh it's like when i first started listening to hollywood handbook 
I, I chuckles a galore, but now I'm just like appreciative of the craft because I can kind of see where their mind will work and go. Yeah. I still chuckle, but uh, less. So at this new job, mm -hmm. they are now laughing at me all the time. Yes. And I'm like, oh, because it, and it's even like this stupid shit. Like <clears throat> Stacy was like, oh, yeah, get all this stuff logged in. And then tomorrow we can just we can marry it all together. And I was like, I'm going to have to get ordained. And she laughed at it. And I was like, the fuck? Don't Hell laugh yeah. at that. <laughs> You say, <laughs> you see a, a like a handsome otter that like I feel like you'd have like a photo, like a drawing of an otter sure. in like a business suit or like a tuxedo, and you right. say, right. Va -va -va -voo, and then they laugh at that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now I'm like, oh, wait, I am funny. Yes, I tell you this all the time. Yeah. So that's my story. <laughs> salute to your story. Well, let's salute to our guest, Nicole. All right. Hello. Hello, everybody. Oh, I'm Steph. Oh, oh. St Steph, hold it. I, oh, okay. We introduce you. James you is going to introduce me. you. Oh, Don't that's worry. Right. Yeah. That's right. So much less anxiety. You know her as the music collective, which I, I guess a music, you can be a single entity and yeah. still be a collective. And some people do occasionally, um, I do collaborate with people very often, yeah. So uh, that's why we say collective fuckers. Yes. <laughs> Even if it was just me on this network talking about Beyblade style, I'd still say it's a podcast collective because it's a collection of so many podcasts that no one's listening to. Sure. <laughs> but you know her from the collective musical, like Broadway musicals. No. Right. Drum and bass type shit, motherfuckers. It's mm -hmm. KSBP, which I just found out means Kansas Beach Patrol. It's Steph. What's up, y'all? I'm Steph. I make music and I stream on Twitch. Make music right now. Yes, you can find my music at ksbp.bandcamp.com. No, no, no. Make music right now. <laughs> oh, right now? Oh, one sec. <laughs> Whoa, it's your Hell favorite, yeah. James. Uh, yeah, it's the, it's the aiming break, baby. Yeah. What's your we Twitch handle? My Twitch handle is KSBPTV. Sick. Dot yeah. TV, you mean. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because I... Uh... What? Oh, no, oh, wait, no, never mind. It's twitch.tv oh, no, 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 forward no, slash. Twitch.tv slash KSBPTV. That is the actual mistake I made on Formulaic, by the way. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, you, uh, to be honest, last time you were on Formulaic for a pup named Scooby-Doo, I just kind of like breezed past. I was like, if this needs to be edited to make it be the correct URL, it's just going to be in the description, guys. Yeah, oh, no, I... I get it. Who's typing in the URLs anymore, folks? I am Give all me the, the link. time. Give me the link. Well, see, my issue is medical providers think I have a smartphone, so they'll send me a URL to a conference call them, but it's on a Ooh. flip phone, so I have to type in letter by letter yeah. this URL. Ooh. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually considering going that route myself, so I'm probably going to have to start get, yeah, worrying about that. Yeah, it's not I mean... Uh, it's fine. I said that to my last doctor, like, oh, hold on. You texted it to me. I need to, like, bring it to my computer. And she's like, I don't think that's going to work. And I was like, I'm I'm confident it will. A URL <laughs> oh, yeah, is a yeah. URL. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll still work. I think because she's like, well, how would I see you and talk to you? It's on a computer. Yeah, there's microphones and webcams. That's how. Exactly. Yeah, it's it all goes to the same place. And like, I, I think because of the fact that like when you bring something up on your phone and it looks a little bit different than when you bring it up on the computer, I think people will sometimes yeah. kind of get that confused. Like, well, we'll be like, hey, uh, this won't work if I send this to your computer. It's like, yeah, well, it'll be yeah. fine. Everything yeah. works better on a computer, guys. It does. I will. I got to be honest. Like, it's why I pretty much use my computer for like most stuff. I don't really use a phone a mm -hmm. whole lot anymore. Making music, grilling, yeah. all yeah. of these things work better on a computer. That's right. That's right. They really do. I'm sorry. Did you say gooning? Well, okay. Both of you. Nicole heard the correct thing. Why did you think I said gooning? And I if I did, what is that? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's get into it, folks. <laughs> No, I, I, no, what did you say? Grilling. Grilling. Oh, actually, yeah, you're right. Uh-huh. 
what you do is you play an early build of Cyberpunk 2064, and mm -hmm. uh, you really let your CPU start cooking, slap oh, some yeah. meat on there, ooh, baby, get it up to That's a nice right. 165 for 10 consecutive seconds. And if you want, you want, like, a really high heat for, like, you know, getting a real nice sear on a steak, open up a uh, Google Chrome as well. I okay. Just, yeah, yeah, as well as uh, getting, you know, an early build of Cyberpunk 2077. Just, you know, yeah. Start downloading some stuff on LimeWire. Start downloading some stuff online off of uh, Google Chrome. Uh, open as many tabs as you possibly can. Open up Fruity Loops and just as many <laughs> vital plugins as you can. Yes. Installing a bunch of software. Uh-huh. Which is crazy that they're allowing you to do two at once. I, <laughs> I swear you're only allowed to do one at a time. In this economy, <laughs> oh, you're yeah. kidding me. Now, gooning on a computer is completely different. Oh, absolutely. We're gooning and grilling, folks. We got to make sure that's not like a urban dictionary term for like, the, well, I can't go that route because that includes that bodily function. It, for like opening up like a wound and like showing a friend. Ew. Oh, God. Yeah, see, guys, no. this is what happens no. when I don't talk <laughs> about the C means. word, okay? I have to go in a separate route. Yeah, it's more creative. Yeah. Okay, Urban yeah. Dictionary gooning may be most simply defined as the state usually achieved after prolonged edging session. Yeah. There we go. Okay, there we go. When okay. a man becomes completely hypnotized by the feeling of radiating his penis. He just here, a man. Here we go. Audience, this is James learning what gooning is. Yeah, yay. Wow. Wow. Yeah, all the terms are around edging. Yeah. Or just like someone who is a chronic masturbator. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that also it's kind of goes into that territory. Like, pretty much yeah, that whole territory is just pretty much covered by that. And I'll be honest, like, when it comes to gooning, I'm an advocate for, like, eliminating screen time, you know? G like, have some vintage pornography as magazines. Go hard copy with this stuff. Yeah, yeah. People, start printing out your pornos. Uh-huh. Head over to Chicago Comics, head to the back, <laughs> on the ground level where children can see, there's just grab bags of value oh, packs God, of no, pornography no, no. magazines. Oh, no. They're like, $9, no. go get oh, some. Tell oh, them God. James sent you, so maybe they'll give me some more <laughs> oh, hours. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Really, yeah, maybe that that's what we really need to do is really kind of get back into um, the physical form of, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, uh, really getting those pages sticky. And, uh, yeah, well, I, I think I, I get what you mean. Yeah. No, they would not become sticky because we're gooning oh. right now. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. None True. of that stickiness comes out. None see? of the stickiness comes. Yeah, I see. Okay. Guys, we're allowed to talk about gooning. <laughs> 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 so deal with it. All so right. Deal with it. Steph, hey, well, what, what you been up to? Anything cool, exciting happen in your neck of the woods? Well, I am working on a bunch of music right now, including from, um, I'm forgetting his name, uh, Swamp Place Bad Guy. Swamp Place Bad Guy? Is that the name? That's the name of the guy? I'm pretty sure it's Marshland Monster, but I wouldn't say a monster <gasps> equates a bad guy. That's true. That's true. You're right. Sometimes it right. does. Sometimes monsters, monsters are great. I, you know, yeah, you know, you're right. I've learned something today. Uh, Nicole, this is why Monsters Inc. They're afraid to come out from underneath the bed. You're right. Well, some monsters, monsters are just can like be us. Bad. They're just yeah. like us. Yeah. Because they're afraid of you. Because they're they're like, oh, they're going to just think we're monsters. They won't accept mm. us. You've seen little what? monsters. It's why, oh, he, he, what's his name? Howie Mandel. Howie, I was going to say yeah. Huey Douglas. Huey Douglas. And the nude. He <laughs> doesn't want to come out and say, hey, I'm in my leather jacket here. Hey, classic Huey Douglas. Uh, Douglas. And the new. <laughs> watch I instantly forgot the name. Uh, Nicole, you uh, can believe you watch it because one, it was for my birthday, and two, it's a great movie. It's sure. I I will walk. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe if I was a, a child, sure. It's got all the cool savages in it. It has 
Huey Douglas. It's a great movie. Yeah, classic. Are you saying like Fred Savage? Yeah, Fred and Ben Savage are both in there. Yeah. Oh, okay. You've seen yeah. the movie. Yeah, working on that and uh, working on some just a bunch of music with a bunch of cool people. Uh, the lovely streamer Pander Sarah, working on uh, some stuff with her. Got some cool stuff in the works. Hell yeah. And, uh, streaming and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've discussed music, but let's discuss Spider-Man, shall we? Yes, let's. Steph, what is your experience with Spider-Man as a whole? I was sort of like loosely into comics growing up. I had friends that were like much way more into it, but I also, I, I just didn't have like the money to collect them and stuff like that. So I, I just kind of, I had other, there were other things that I like wanted to spend my money on collecting and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. for whatever reason, I just, comics were kind of in the periphery, but Spider-Man was like a, like a, a series I remember like kind of being into like when I was a little bit younger. And uh, I remember playing the, Spider-Man game for it was released for like a bunch of systems but it was like I think PS1 and mm. Dreamcast and mm. N64 and PC I think I remember playing like that on like several different consoles because like I had a friend that had it on like one system I had it on N64 and I, I think I remember playing like the PC demo of it I played the shit out of it and I love that game and I also when Spider-Man 1 came out, I was like, I think, God, I was really young when it came out. And, but I remember, like, my mom took me to see it twice Hell the yeah. summer that it came out. Uh, and I remember really loving the movie at the time. I was a little kid, so I was just like, this is cool. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and Dave, the, the guy from Saliva is, is in the soundtrack. <laughs> oh, it just is in the soundtrack. <laughs> That's the thing. I think. It was like the guy from Nickelback and the guy from Saliva did that. Yeah, the hero song. Okay. And I remember that I was not like, you know, obviously not into Nickelback, but I was into Saliva at the mm -hmm. time. Um, and I remember listening to that quite a bit. It was also played on like every radio station. Yeah. For whatever reason, I just remember hearing like it was not just on pop stations, but like also like every alternative station, every rock station. It was just kind of everywhere. It was That's nominated like, for a Golden Globe. It was. No, it, I was it. No, it wasn't. I just made that up. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, I was assuming. Was it? I was assuming like <laughs> you could have convinced me, James. You really could have. Maybe convinced it me. was because if it played like over the credits, then maybe there's a chance. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like it was like what two years prior that like that one P Diddy song that's basically just samples like that Led Zeppelin song from King Dan that was in, that was in the Godzilla movie. Yeah, that did win like uh, that did win something, didn't it? I don't. That couldn't have. It couldn't. Have? Oh, really? I, for some reason, I thought it actually did win some sort of category in the Grammys, but I could I could be wrong about that. There's just been a lot of things that, like, around that time, there are a lot of, like, strange winners and a lot of strange nominees, because, like, that's kind of the time of, uh, like, rap metal was getting real big. Uh, no, yeah, that one won nothing. Of, okay, you're right. Yeah, okay. so I will check this, uh, it's called Heroes? Oh, man, I don't remember oh, the name of the song, actually. Oh, hero can save, can save us, us. now so gonna stand so here waiting. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I was like, heroes saliva, but it autocorrects to a herpes saliva. <laughs> herpes? Whoa. Whoa. What? Nice. Nice. Um, Spider-Man hero song by Chad Kroger. He owns so many supermarkets, guys. Yeah. Wow. wow. Good, good, uh, okay. You want to know what? It did win or it was nominated for a... Grammy. Wow. Critics' Choice Award. Okay. Oh, guys, there's no Golden Globe. No Golden Globe, but there, is, but there is a Grammy nomination, and mm -hmm. that's that's the thing. I was like, I was really like, oh wow, because I knew it was one of the G uh, awards, <laughs> one of the one of those, one of them, one of those fancy awards, one of those statue type awards. It was nominated for one, two, three, four awards at the Grammys. Wow. Four awards. Yeah. Wow. See, this is how your E got is you just become a composer. Yeah. That. Oh, my God. That's the way forward, James. That's what we got to start doing. Uh -huh. We got to start, like, composing music for, for uh, Nickelback. We gotta, we, for, <laughs> yes. Well, excuse me. <laughs> Chad Kroger. <laughs> he doesn't need those other goons Chad to be nominated Kroger. for a Grammy. I'm surprised Apologies. it wasn't an Oscar. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Prestige. Fucking love that movie. The Prestige or <laughs> the Oscars yes, the or Prestige. well, I've never seen it. I've never shown you that movie. Uh, no, I think you had it on once when I like came over. Wow, wow, wow. And you're like, oh, man, look at these two hunks that if, like, you looked like them, you'd kiss me. You probably wouldn't like it. It's too serious. I like serious things, no, guys. You don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> you do not. I want to watch The Godfather so bad. You want to like serious things, but you don't. <laughs> When I see it, it, a serious movie, I get a little joker on it and say, why so serious? <laughs> exactly. And then we watch something silly. Well, wait, no, we watch that extremely serious TV show, Friend of the Family. Yeah, who started watching that? That wasn't me. No, it was not. I'm pro okay, well, I still, no, because I wanted to watch it. I like true crime shit. Maybe that's what it is. I like detective shit. No, you don't. Oh, yes, okay. I do. Oh. <laughs> I, I said, do you want to watch True Detective yeah, season two? Yeah, not that two? one. And he said no. Yeah, because I know it's season two and it's shit. And I, know, I, said, I don't yeah, want to watch a bad. shit <laughs> serious thing. Exactly. I called it correct. <laughs> I tried to give Vince Vaughn benefit of the doubt, but no. I don't think it was <laughs> his fault on that one. I mean, yeah, it just wasn't good in general. But Fargo... Yeah. Still really fucking good. But that's not serious, mm. though. It's all goofy sometimes. It's not goofy. It's like, boink, 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 boink. That's boom, not. Boom, 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 I think boom. you're watching The Birthday Boys. Oh, I am. <laughs> and thinking it's but Fargo. What? I read so much <laughs> fucking Batman. That's serious. It is. Yeah. It's not like I'm over here reading The Simpsons comics every day. <laughs> Some days it is. Some days oh. it's get fuzzy, but mainly Batman. To the point where I'm having nightmares. That's what it should have been. But I feel like Bat. I don't like superhero stories. He's not a superhero. Because he just there man. aren't like, most of the time, it feels like there aren't real stakes. Oh, the, in these mm. arcs, I'm like, is Batman going to die? This stuff I've been reading recently, the Batman who laughs, the dark metal stuff. I'm I like, I think he dies. White Knight was really good. Oh I, my God. It was. <sighs> Ooh, it, it does live up to the hype. Oh, and yeah. you got to read the Batman Beyond. That's what I've heard. I need to get caught up on that. But like I, my friends talk about that like a lot, like how good it is. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and that's the thing. I'm someone who like, I can't, you can't spoil things for me really. Like yeah. you can just tell me like the endings of shit. I, I'll, whatever. I'll probably still consume whatever media you're spoiling for me. Like mm -hmm. it's not that big a deal. And so, like, that's one that's been on my list for a while. I think it's just because, like, of how much I've heard, like, my friends talk about it. Yeah, um, I, and... I would say it lives up to the hype. And that's from someone who doesn't like superhero comics. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not super into them either. Yeah. And so that's a big reason why I'm like, okay, I might, I might dip my toe into this. Yeah. Then uh, I maybe you won't like Beyond the White Knight because it's in the future. Like, it. Why are we talking about Batman? We when need we to should talk be about talking Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Spider -Man, yeah. Guys, today we watched episode 20 of Spider-Man Toei style entitled One Mystery Calls Forth Another, The Secret Behind My Birth. What a title. Uh-huh. Steph, initial thoughts. What did you think of this? Okay, first off, intro just a fucking banger. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, yeah. I just gotta say, intro, banger. Like, I actually, like, ran it back and listened to it again. Like, I, we need to bring back horns in, in like, music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we need to, like, bring back the brass section, please. Like, that shit was fucking sick. Like, I actually really like that. And that's something that, like, I gotta see if that, like, ever got sampled on anything. Because that, it goes hard. Yeah. And I... I've, I'm surprised I haven't heard that as like a sample before uh, anywhere. And uh, I'm no, there's there's a reason. Oh, it's owned by Toei because uh, they yeah. are very litigious. Yeah, that's that makes sense. They love that makes their sense. cease and desist. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. love their copyright and they love to use it. Um, yeah, that thing, no dust. I watched this totally legal version of it. Then, <laughs> uh -huh. actually, you want to know what? I think Marvel technically owns the rights to everything involved on this, so it might really, yeah, it might be fine okay. to use. Mm. Disney's not litigious. I mean, 
I mean, they kind of can't be with Mickey Mouse anymore. Uh, one specific area. That expired this year, didn't it? Yeah, but only Steamboat one specific. Steamboat Willie. Yes. Uh, only Steamboat Willie, though. Oh, okay. We got to make a Steamboat Willie 2. Just a sequel yes. to Steamboat Willie. Okay. Everyone's Dark, wanna gritty reboot. No, no, no. Just Steamboat Willie too. Everyone's yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Everyone's taking this as let's make a horror movie out of Steamboat Willie. Yeah, no, no fuck that. No, no, we yeah. There's too much of that. If you're we right. make a uh, truly the same techniques that they would have used back then, we got to use one of those cameras, one shot at a time. Boop, we will boop, animate boop, 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 boop. Steamboat Willie too. Yeah, we're, the music is recorded the same way. It's, like, recorded on, like, a fucking, like... Hand crank. It? Hand crank, like, wax cylinder shit. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, they yeah. might have had magnetic tape back then. <laughs> I, th I think they did have, like, an early version of magnetic tape at the yeah. time. I think you're right, yeah. And, I, yeah, early vinyl certainly wouldn't have exi w would have existed around mm -hmm. that time, too, yeah. But, of course, um, it's in mono, no stereo, no surround sound to be seen. No, no. Don't you dare yeah, do no. it. Dolby, forget about it. The only surround sound you had back then is when uh, a bunch of cars are circling you because you, you offended a gang member and they're about to stab you. But they're going <laughs> to do it while snapping. Nah, see? Nah. Oh, yeah, that's that would be more of the 50s, them snapping. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You're correct by saying, yeah, she, and then they whip out a Tommy gun. Yeah, I guess it's more that, the, the snapping and stuff like that. I guess that's more like a 50s greaser thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicole, that's your heritage, them. Yeah, she Tommy Gun Mafia style. Yeah, and I'm offended. Uh huh. <laughs> quite frankly. Because you're Italian, brother. Sure. It says so on your sure. Me Too stuff. Not mine. I see. Oh, okay. Hashtag Our... not my Me Too. <laughs> <laughs> on your 53 and Me. Uh huh. You mean my sister? You're the same as your sister genetically. Oh, okay. I think. Wow. Yeah, the exact same where uh, that's how that works. You guys have the same DNA, uh, ribeclobin. Right, right, ribeclobin? Is that yeah, the RNA and the DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid. There we go. And then you have ribeclobin nucleic acid. Is that what it's called? Is that what it stands for? Uh, it's not what I'm saying. It's what Nicole's saying. <laughs> I think oh, okay, I got, cool. I don't know if the deoxy part is right. It doesn't Sorry. matter because we're here to talk about Spider-Man Spider -Man. and his genetics, including, but not limited to, spider blood. Ooh, right. so quick rundown of this episode. Man, there's this girl and she has psychic power, so you you know who's after her, the Iron Cross army. But uh-oh, Takuya's on the case, sort of, because he's a tutor of this lady when she gets broken into by Amazonis in a sundress, looking like she's going to the <laughs> debutante ball to play bridge with her bridge club. So... Uh, Takuya saves the day and uh oh she's not the one with psychic powers it's just a lady who looks exactly like this child Spider-Man mm. oh and she's so close to being orphaned in this Nicole yeah they, they had oh restraint yeah. but yeah, they yeah, did yeah. have a dead child oh actually you want to they can't twice orphan someone yeah this, yeah, this woman yeah. was put at the doorsteps of a church adopted by these two they can't kill those people i think that that's where they had restraint right, yeah if it was found out oh no like she is our biological kid that's their death sentence yeah uh, Steph, I don't know if you are aware of this. In this show, they love to kill children and they love to kill parents of children. You know, that didn't really, uh, of course, you know, I don't I hate to hate to spoil the ending here, but like I, it didn't happen this time. But I kind of get that vibe mm -hmm. like that. This is this is a little uh, <laughs> you couldn't make Toei Spider-Man today because of woke. Um, I, think. I don't think it's woke. I, I think no, no, it's... no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm uh, joking yeah, I know. But, um, I... Uh, but I, 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 I think. Because of the like, yeah, there's a lot of like weird stuff that like seems very like we'll get to the we'll get to the part about like the ad that yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> um, that that's a little that's a little sus. I do. I would like to see. So things like three ninjas back when that was out, those were like Toei Spider-Man adults 
pointing guns at children. Like they are real guns. They're not yeah. lasers. It's like you could buy this gun from a gun show gun. And I, mm-hmm. I would love to see someone say that we need that back and say, oh, man, kids are too sensitive these days. They don't want to see people their age have guns drawn at them from adults. And it's like, I think you're misunderstanding the situation here. here, Yeah. They're terrified of that. They need to go to school and also be scared of that at school. So they don't, that's not escapist media back then. As mm-hmm. a child, I'm like, yeah, you want to know what? I could be a ninja. I could take down a bunch of goons, not gooning, but a bunch of goons with guns. It, exactly. Yeah. It's like a whole, yeah, it, it plays very differently today. Yeah. Nicole, when you were a child, what escapist media did you like? And as an adult, what escapist media do you like? Oh, wow. Okay. That's a lot. I don't know. We had like every Disney VHS. Okay. So probably that. Songs uh, of the South. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, James. Fucking Barney and Teletubbies and Blue's Clues. Okay. And now today? Oh, today? Scrubs still? I don't really watch Gilmore Girls as much as I used to. But it used to be Gilmore Girls. Okay. How much do people actually care about this? Well, <laughs> let's ask Steph. Steph, yeah. as a child, what were your escapists? So when I was a, I was a child, we like had cable like off and on. But I think like when when we did, it, it would be like Cartoon Network. If DBZ or Sailor Moon were on, I would watch that. Uh, in pretty much any anime, I would watch that. Mm-hmm. I'd say, though, my dad did do some work for um, the failed uh, video rental startup uh, Blockbuster. and um, That's not we, failed. I would say that succeeded. I, I, I'm, I'm, jo- I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. But yeah, yeah, no, it was we used to get like a lot of free videos and Hell free, yeah. uh, like video games and stuff like that. So usually I would want like watch a lot of like VHS tapes and stuff like that. We, we would get we would kind of get video games and like. It was kind of hair miss. Like we get like you know some 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 good ones, but we also get like some very weird, obscure ones too. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of like a mix of like a, a mix of different things. Um, but what about today? And today, I mean, to be honest, it's not m- that much different. I suppose I don't watch a lot of TV shows and stuff like that, except mm-hmm. for like when they're being played like in like a Discord or on on a stream or something like that. I like watching. I like watching things with people more than I, w- I like watching things by myself. Okay. And so like if it's by myself, usually it's more um, video games and like music. All right. Usually now, like if it's if it's by myself, but if I'm with if I'm with other people, you know, again, video games and music, but also a lot of the stuff that like whatever people seem to be watching. Okay. For me, it was, you know, Ninja Turtles, Secret of the Ooze, Three Ninjas, Digimon, Batman. And today it's, you know, Three Ninjas, TMNT, Secret of the Ooze, Batman, Digimon, and Troll 2. So you want to know what? That's called growth. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That's Uh right. Like, what are the, I guess it's... Teens and younger in peril, and they're taking down adults. I think that's. Mm. I'm still in my uh, screw authority, and authority is always above the age of 26. I'm authority now. Oh no. I remember, like, really liking stuff like that, too. That sort of, like, kids or teens or whatever against authority or, like, it really any sort of, like, downtrodden, like, sort of group against authority, I think, mm-hmm. is still, like, a pretty, like, one I, I I usually enjoy stuff like that a lot more. We got to write the ultimate children against authority, and it's, like, uncles. I guess that would be the movie Uncle Sam. Ah, man, what oh, could wow. it be? I guess, G- no, God and Jesus... And let's also say St. Peter come down and they're saying everyone's under our control. So now we're in this dystopia and the only ones who can take them down are a a ragtag group of atheists who are like, (laughs) I I don't think these are, which is weird that they're atheists and they're all children. But that's, I think that's the only way you could become an atheist. You'd still, you're like God, Jesus and St. Peter are in front of me. They ascended from heaven. But that was just a bunch of rope tricks. (laughs) Now, Now we got a rope trick for them. A piano wire style. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying they're going to choke out Jesus. 
This is like the atheist version of like God's not dead or whatever. Yeah. Like, God is yeah. dead. God is dead. God will die. That's the God title. God must die. Oh, like, no. like Romeo must die, except but uh, yeah. No. Romero gotcha. must die. Oh wow. And he's a zombie, so now we gotta kill him again. You're a movie ma- you're a regular movie machine over here. Thank you. <laughs> Let's get into this episode, guys. <laughs> My first note was just watch House already, Nicole, because it starts out looking like <laughs> well, the movie House. Well, you said, let's watch My Best Friend's Exorcism, and we watched that, and it wasn't very good. Yeah, well, uh, I... So, that's on you. Uh, well, all the other movies we watch, and it's like, oh, boy, we probably shouldn't have watched that. That's kind of on you, Nicole. What? You watch a lot of movies where you, like, are upset you watched the movie. I'm saying... We're watching it tonight, You're upset guys. We didn't watch it. House you had tonight. the opportunity to put that movie on and you chose not to. Next episode of this show, we will quickly recap the movie House from 1979. Oh <laughs> what? I don't know what exact date it was, so that's why I went <laughs> 70. <laughs> What's your first note, Nicole? I mean, I don't really have any noteworthy notes. Okay, well, I'll start out. Amazonas, who recently went through a costume change, is your dropout scumbag high school friend finally going through their girly phase? (laughs) Okay. Okay, this is, wow, yeah, I'm right here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Someone was like, I'm going to punch wow. you out, but then all of a sudden it's like, I think I like pink now. Yeah. <laughs> if my um, idol pink can like pink, can't I? <laughs> they were radicalized by watching the movie Barbie. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Hey, that's the Amazonas for you. Well, the first note I wrote, I'm going to be harping on this the whole time. I'd love that, okay, Professor Monster, that's the main ba- bad guy, yeah. right? Yeah. I love that Professor Monster and Amazonas are just, like, banking on this girl being, it, like, they're like, no, this girl can <laughs> see into the future. And, like, she saw an earthquake that happened mm-hmm. 10 days later. And, like, they live on, like, the ring of fire where, like, there's, like, active, like... Volcanic activity. An active, like, seismic activity and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Our earthquakes are going to be pretty common. Like, I, I bet you could probably, like, get pretty good at guessing when an earthquake's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that they took the fact that this girl predicted one earthquake and they're like, she can see into the future and she's going to tell us everything about, like, how we're going to take over the world and she's going to fulfill this prophecy for us. And it's like, she guessed when one earthquake was going to happen. Uh, yeah. Also, mm-hmm. it. It's showing your future. It's not, they think that it's like, oh, you're going to show us how we succeed. No, every single future she shows you guys is going to be the same. It's just Spider-Man casually (laughs) punching you unconscious. That's it. That's all it's going to be because no matter what, you are going to fail at the hands of this buffoon. Exactly. That's what you're you're really wanting to see. You're wanting to, you're willing to kidnap a girl. (laughs) You're willing to kidnap a girl to, like, fucking, like, just to watch your ass get kicked, like, beforehand? Mm -hmm. Like, that's all that's gonna happen. You can't prevent it. It's, it's, like, it's set in stone, like, apparently. Like, it's not something you can change. They're gonna be like, well, he's gonna hold us with his left hand and he'll be giving us right hooks. If we just lean to the left now, we'll be fine. No! He's gonna start gut punching you. Exactly. He's gonna, (laughs) he's gonna see that. He's gonna react and, like, all that's gonna change is, like, you're gonna get your ass kicked in, like, a slightly different way. That's the only thing that's gonna, that's the only thing that's gonna change about the situation. He's gonna start hockey punching you. Poor yeah. management, that's oh, what I yeah. say. Absolutely. Yeah. Really just a badly thought out plan from the get-go. Yeah. Like, yeah, it just is not good. Like, they don't even know how her powers work. Mm-hmm. They know that it's when looking in a mirror, or at least that's all they can assume. Yeah, and that's it. And they're like, yeah, this is going to work. And it's like, like, you did no research. Tell us when our gang of Tumblr rivet heads are going to take over the world. <laughs> like... It's absurd. It's yeah. like some musicians, I won't name names, when like <laughs> one thing works slightly, they'll go, huh, that's the only thing we need to do on TikTok, right? Or even if it didn't work for them, it worked for someone else. They're like, that's what we got to be doing, guys. And it's like, no. Yeah, yeah. It no. was just a luck of the algorithm. That's right. That's right. I think that's like, it's so funny to watch like 
you can see from the get go. Oh, this is what's going to be your undoing mm -hmm. is that you just a group of villains that take themselves way too seriously, but they're way more buffoonish than our hero in the story. Like, that's the thing. Like, they end up being like really kind of way, really much more buffoonish than Spider-Man, really. Mm -hmm. It's like when you watch a cult documentary, you think, mm -hmm. how did these people even become in a cult? If there was a documentary about these fuckers, which kind of it is, you can be like, oh, no, they blindly follow one thing and hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they've never heard the phrase, put the horse before the cart. Like, they've just never heard that phrase. It And they, it seems like, that's the other thing. I haven't watched um, the series up to this point. Has anyone really established that, like, precogs are a real thing? Like, is this established in, like, public, like, knowledge? Are they just assuming that, like, precogs are a real thing? I think we've seen some people, I mean, we've seen okay. people with super strength and probably on their planet because they are from a different planet. This could right. be a thing okay. that, that is sense. more readily available or at mm -hmm. least, oh, we know these 10 people on our planet can do this. So it wouldn't be that far fetched. There is a man who can like shoot spider stuff out of his hands and all of that. So to think that someone can also see the future isn't a huge jump. It re yeah, I guess that's not too wild. Yeah, um, it's like if it's almost like if a gang had like magic powers. They're not, they're, they just kind of like live in this like weird little spot. Like, I don't know, like, it's very weird. Like, it's it's just not, um... It's kooky. It's, it's, it's kooky. It would be hard to take them seriously, even if they were like, if they were like real in this, in this world, it would be very hard to take them seriously. And it's very hard to take them seriously. In the, in the, in the, like, I know, the, it would be very easy to take them seriously when they're like, oh, hey, you see that child just running on this dirt track? Should we walk around him? No, no, no. Just plow into him with that truck. Okay. And then like you know start what? shooting them. So <laughs> okay, like, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> Remember, they're killing entire families. We they need are, to yeah, take them actually, seriously. You know what? You're right. We sh yeah. Never mind. I take that back. Like this is the thing is, is like they are like for a group as violent as them. Like, why are they just so why are they so dumb? <laughs> like, why do they just never have any plans for anything? They're just just wanton violence. And like, I'm going to have my way. And if it if it if it doesn't work, I'm going to do something. This will be the last thing we say, because we do have to move on. I, right, right, right. I think it's the fact that when conquering other planets, they have not really had to deal with someone as well protecting as Spider-Man. Spider-Man is like taking them down every single time they try to succeed in taking over the world. So now they're right. kind of just flailing out of control because they haven't had to deal with challenges before. They're kind of like trust fund kids. All of a sudden having um, to have a job, they're like, what? Huh? That makes sense, actually. That makes way more sense <laughs> for that for for that group. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. It's, the fact that, like, they have all this confidence, they're extremely arrogant, and they want their way, and they want it now. Now, but they have no fucking skills. Yeah. Other than like wanton violence, like and just destruction. And we can make like wonky men machines, and that's about <laughs> yeah. it. Like they're technologically advanced, but they don't know how to use it. Kind of like people who get a bunch of high quality studio equipment and all of this shit, but they don't know how to use it. So their music mm -hmm. still sounds like dog shit. It's like, you know, you get FL Studio for the first time and you can pretty much just only make like, like mess around with the 808 mm -hmm. stuff. And like, yeah, and I think not having any idea of how shit should sound and things like yeah. that. I think, yeah, yeah, no, I get that. I get it. It's like, yeah, someone who like buys a bunch of gear thinking that it will it'll help them with whatever skill yeah. that they're, they're just now getting in. into. Yeah. Um, and they haven't built, you know, the skill or the neural pathways to like really kind of do the thing they really want to do. Mm -hmm. But they have a whole bunch of money to throw at the problem. Yeah. But next thing that happens is Takuya's just outside with Hitomi and Hitomi's taking photos of him and she's like, okay, that'll be enough. And he says, no, 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 we need to make sure we get good ones for my resume, which is exactly <laughs> like when I asked Nicole 
to take photos of me. She's mm. just like very, oh, is this over yet? And I say, no, just a couple more. Like we uh, like we want to make sure we're getting cute photos of me for a profile picture. Hey, I'm I'm getting better about yeah, uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. Yeah, with the anal dentata, uh, yeah. which was asking a lot. Yeah. You, you you did fantastic on that cover shoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like this is exactly how I act whenever I have my picture taken since I've, like, come out as trans. But the thing he does when he's getting his picture taken is the thing I used to do before I I came out as trans. The whole, like, smile, but then, like, do a serious face and then do, like, a (laughs) tough guy. And then be like, how did I look? How did I look? Should we do it again? Should I do another one where I'm smiling? Like, like that sort of thing. Like, it's so funny to, like, watch, watch that, like... How like how dudes take pictures is uh-huh. so funny. Like it's it's just very funny to me. And like he kind of encapsulated like that whole thing of like yeah, I should smile for a picture. Oh wait, no, I shouldn't. And then get really self conscious about it after the picture's taken. Mm-hmm. See, the yeah. thing I always get criticized for is I smile, but when I smile, just like naturally, my eyes close a little bit. So everyone will say, mm-hmm. "Yo, you need to have your eyes open." I okay, it's either I smile. And I don't have eyes open or I don't smile and my eyes are open. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of have the same thing going on. I have like high cheekbones. So Mm -hmm. I kind of, yeah, yeah. I I just have sunken in eyes. Yeah, I get like, it's more like almost like the, like the half moon eyes. Like what what happens when I do that? But yeah, and I'm usually like kind of smiling like, like just like that because like I don't like showing my teeth because, uh. I have a lot of dental work that I need to get done. <laughs> also, in case there are any uh, rabid dogs around. Oh, ex- exactly. Show your teeth around them. They'll start growling and <sighs> chomping oh, on you. I, yeah. I hate it when I'm getting my picture taken and there's a rabid dog. Every time. <sighs> Every time. Every time. God. If I were to get a mug shot, I'd be like, well, I can't smile in this. That's why most people <laughs> don't smile, because one of the canine units is around. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. It's, it has nothing to do with the fact that they have been arrested and their life is being <laughs> absolutely fucked over. It's it's because they don't want to get the dog mad. I, mean, I need to come up with, you know, like an A-cab dominator, Nicole. Okay. Yeah. It's dominators, but for canine units, just... Yeah. slightly yeah. terrorizing them in a cage. Steph, I don't know if you know about the Dominator, but we don't have time to discuss it. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I, I think I know what you're talking about, but yeah. All right, so Takuya wants this resume done because he's finally mm-hmm. getting into the workforce, even though he has been in the workforce as a dirt bike rider <laughs> yeah. person, like a racer. But he's like, no, like here, it's going to be easy. I'm going to be a tutor. You guys are apprehensive about that because you think I'm a bumbling idiot, but that's only the secret identity that I put forth. So no one expects the me as Spider-Man. His concern mm-hmm. for his like employment status is like a very like... Oh, wow. Like, it, it felt like very like, oh, boy, like his family thinks you can tell they love him, but like they think he's like a loser. <laughs> like, yeah, that sort but, of thing. Yeah. yeah. It sucks because his dad did just die. So, yeah, yeah like they have to give him on, some y'all. leeway there. Give him some. Yeah. Yeah. And I give the guy a break. Even, you know what? Like, hell, even if his dad or whatever, like. Even if he just got like a paper cut or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, no, he, he's going through a rough time, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> He's going to give him a break, which they should also give him a break. Takuya is someone who has put forth like I read the headline. I do not Mm -hmm. read the entire article. So the fact that they are Nicole did Uh bring up a good thing and I'll let her bring that up. But he says, oh, don't worry. It's a tutor for a first year middle schooler. It's going to be a fucking cakewalk. And that's probably Mm -hmm. all he read. That's all I would read. Oh, shit. Uh I'm about to make bank by just like showing a kid how to do long division. They take the article and they're like, okay, a first year middle schooler sincerely a stunning middle school girl. And they're like, you fucking pervert. Yeah, yeah, that, I love how like that, it's only played as it like, oh wow, this guy's a massive pervo, not like this guy's a fucking predator. <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's like kind of, play, it's like really weirdly watered down the response. Like I thought that was a bit a bit strange. Um, 
And I remember, like, I wrote this note down as that scene was, like, kind of unfolding. And I wrote, is uh, Spider-Man the villain in this series? No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. No, no. He's just very misunderstood. Nicole, did you have any notes on that one? Yeah. I mean, I was happy to see them comment on it. And, yeah. like, it being from the 70s. Mm-hmm. And having them be like, wow, you're a fucking sicko. And then, like, beat him up. Mm. But then they, he, like, still goes to the tutoring. And I'm like, yeah, what are you guys doing? You still let him go. I also feel it was more so, especially from Hitomi, her being like, N- I am your girlfriend. You're going to go mm. for a younger woman? Uh, what are you doing? What about me? That's yeah. also why it feels uh, even weirder of like, yeah, no, no, yeah, Hitomi, it's... no, like, be yeah. concerned for other reasons if you have concerns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, that scene played out very strangely. Like, it just is like the weirdest way to handle that scene. Like, it, like they handled that the weirdest way possible. It is also culturally um, that, you know, like, we aren't a yeah. part of that culture and they do handle that differently. So. Yeah, yeah, I understand, yeah. But it's also sort of clear to the viewer that, like, it's not so much that, like, Takia is it's, it's fucking, you know, it, it's definitely a misunderstanding. Yeah. That, that sort of thing. It's it's yeah. definitely, you can kind of tell, like, the viewer can definitely tell that. But, yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it's just a very bizarre scene. Yeah. Um, I mean, and- it could just be them, like, jokingly saying it. Yeah, but uh, you can't jokingly that, say that then leave him with welts to the point where he has to like bandage his face. With yeah, the, like the but X that's bandages, part of the yeah. comedy. Yeah, that yeah, it is part of the mm. comedy. But he goes there and he's interviewed and the girl is saying like, "Hey, who are you? What's the deal?" But then says, "Do you love to study?" And he says, "Oh god, no. Oh no, I mean, yes, I love to study." And she's like, "Be honest." And he goes, no, nah, I hate it. And she says, you got the job. So do you guys mm. love to study? And if you do, what do you love to study? <laughs> what? Um, For I Steph, know. I feel like it would be music. Well, yeah, yeah. It'd be music and like software engineering to some degree. I do, okay. I do a bit of coding and stuff like that, too. Hell yeah. Nicole? I don't really study things. I mean, I did take like, but I, it's not like I enjoy. So no, I don't enjoy studying. I do love learning a new skill but i don't like studying okay that's it i love learning i hate studying yeah that's all right it. yeah you need a nickel i love studying like flight schedules subway maps population densities okay that's um james that's uh, concerning so she then says, you got hired by... James! <laughs> I don't like to study that stuff. I'm too busy reading Batman. <laughs> so I love studying that stuff on Gotham maps. So then I could be like, oh, yeah, I bet this is where the Joker would be at. Okay. Yeah. I wonder where Harley Quinn's hanging out with her hyena. Are you going to p- play <laughs> uh, the... Suicide Squad. PS3 games? Oh, the Arkham games? Yeah. I don't like the Arkham games. Oh, okay. Uh-uh. They're not mm. for me, but we, we got to start churning through notes. Mm-hmm. She says, oh, I hired you not because of your studying skills, but because of your detective skills. And you should have said, oh, hon, you're actually looking for Batman, not Spider-Man. Yeah. But mm. she didn't know he was Spider-Man. But she, how does he, she know he's world's yeah, greatest I detective? Know. I do not know. Ra's al Ghul gave some wrong information, said it's Takia. No, it's Bruce Wayne. Like it should have been Hitomi because she's a news. Oh, yeah. Paper oh, person. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. It would have also been a lot cooler if both of them end up becoming in peril and Takia needs to save both of them. Opposed that would have to, been, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, wait. Pretty... You couldn't do that because then Amazonus would see Hitomi. Then Hitomi would see Amazonus, who in the real world, Amazonus plays the editor of the paper. So but then she she'd has be red like, hair now. No, not in that area. Oh. Also, when she had red hair, you could see like where the wig was. It slipped multiple times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yes, it should have been Hitomi, but then realizing you couldn't really do that. But then just have the BME there, not Amazonas. There, solved. Mm. What's your next note? <laughs> my when they were looking at the math equations, my, my mm. I had a note that says I said, okay, nice try. That's not real math. What are those letters doing there? <laughs> <laughs> so 
Amazonist sees Takuya there and is like, wait, Takuya's here, but why? It's crazy how she hasn't made the leap to either he's trying to become a part of the Iron Cross army, or maybe he has a thing for me. Maybe he wants to kiss while lying down. Hmm. That's a good point yeah. <laughs> you're making. <laughs> So he runs out after them because they kidnap the girl, the Iron Cross army. And then he somehow gets in front of their car and they're like, we're just going to chase you down like we did that one child and hit and kill. Yeah. And then you <laughs> saved with your spider blood. But we don't know that part. So he's like, Dude, uh, gets hit by the car, but then tumbles into this just like little river. And then yeah. they say... As they're driving away, probably thinking he's dead, Amazana says, a fitting image for a buffoon. Oh, wow. A fitting image for a loon, I thought? Oh, yeah, a loon, yes. That's it, yeah. For I was going to say, yeah. For, for a loon, yeah, yeah. For a goon. <laughs> Nicole. A fitting image for a for gooning. A gooning, yes. 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 And then he comes back as Spider-Man and he somehow he's able to open four doors with one string, a spider string. It like shoots out in four, but he's only capable of choking out thrice. Like he's able to wrap it around three necks, but he can over three doors. His strings are thick. Uh -huh. Those motherfuckers <laughs> are thick. In this one, like Spidey's blasting some fat ropers in this one. Like he's just, yeah, he's been gooning. He's been gooning the whole time. <laughs> ready, you ready to shoot those? Who's been drawing these? Todd McFarlane. I was going to say <laughs> Seth McFarlane. I was like, nope, James, not the guy. I would. I. It's crazy how they haven't done a Spawn comic that's drawn by Seth McFarlane. Wonder. Maybe <laughs> someday. Fingers crossed. A McFarlane Toys has to have put out Family Guy toys. I mean, not necessarily. I think they did. Okay. <laughs> Someone Google that for me. I refuse. Oh, I, I had one note about the Spider Machine GP7. Yes. Okay. Looks kind of sick. Uh huh. Also looks like it's going to fall apart at any fucking second. Like if it goes Ooh. over like 30 miles per hour, that thing is going to like start disintegrating and it become looks... like a massive hazard for everybody. Yeah. Like it's made out of giant Lego pieces. Yeah. It's made out of like, yeah, like Lego pieces and like McDonald's play yeah, play yeah, land yeah. pieces and stuff. Yeah. Um, it looks um, kind of cool. But it also looks like incredibly dangerous. Like I would not, I'd be so scared <laughs> yeah. to drive that on the highway, let alone, let alone like a road where you go like 30 miles per hour. Yeah, <laughs> like, cannot yeah. go over the speed of 50. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm staying in the fucking bike lane with that shit. Like we're on the sidewalk or something. It might have been Mezco that put out those Family Guy toys. Not McFarlane. That sucks. They could have came together as Irishmen should. Wow. That's fine. McFarlane and McFarlane. Wow. Guys, think back on the most serious conversation you've had with your parents, akin to asking your parents, hey, was I adopted? Are you my real parents? Think about that. Is it in your head? Mm. Nicole, you've never had to tell your parents something serious, like either moving to Chicago, quitting college. Okay. Okay, you got those in yeah, your I head. Yeah, I got one of those. Now, reimagine that and someone in a Spider-Man costume is sitting right next to you. <laughs> that's what happens okay. in this episode. She's she's yeah. explaining, hey, I think you're not my real parents, are you? We look nothing alike. And Spider-Man is just silent standing right next to her. But he's not just randomly there. Like, oh, wait, no, but she doesn't. It feels like they're saying she knows he's Spider-Man. Oh, it does? I don't know, because then I'm like, that's why he's there is for, like, emotional support. Well, no, Spider-Man's just saved her. But now mm. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's weird. Why is he there? Yeah. He should be scoping outside, making sure they're not coming back to infiltrate. But she leaves. And just there is a scene of the parents crying on like mm -hmm. uh, like with their head rested on a chair and the mom says we used to be happy and that's parenthood am i right guys oh my Ch god <laughs> if i had a dollar for every time my parents um <laughs> anyway, yeah. and i'm not even saying like oh we had kids we can't have fun anymore no like the shit my siblings put our parents through they're like wow we used to be a happy family what <laughs> happened damn that's wow what happens when you have unplanned children when you're not a fully formed human being and therefore 
you're still trying to figure out your own self, but then you can't because now you have children. And you haven't fully figured out your own mental illness. So instead of just handling your own mental illness, you're now having to deal with the three individuals you've passed your mental illness on to. Exactly. And this isn't a dig at my mom or my father. That's just... That's the shit we had to put them through. Exactly. But if my mom knew about her mental illness or my dad knew like, yeah, I'm prone to like hella anxiety to the point of ulcers. Well, then he could they could have prepared. Maybe we're going to pass this stuff on to our children. Yeah. Let's let's. This is hella relatable. (laughs) (laughs) This is hella relatable. (laughs) I had a note like during the scene where, where she's like, I don't think you're real life. My real family. And like, you didn't save me. You didn't save me when that knife was being thrown at you and stuff like that. And I, I just that scene where the knife gets thrown at the at the wall and, and the and the the dad sees it and is like, oh, and like they both faint mm-hmm. is like, it's just so cartoonish the way it's done. Like, it's, well, what's funny is like the way the dad's face moves. It looks like he smelled the knife. Yeah. And that's <laughs> made him faint. Like, stinky. it's like, is there a stinky knife? Yeah. <laughs> He probably just got cut up. They probably just got done cutting a bunch of, uh, what do you call it? Blue cheese. Oh wow! Dried wow. spit. Yeah, and, <laughs> and so my my so I put I, my note said my real family wouldn't faint from a stinky knife. I know what it's. Uh, he was just cutting up a bunch of chloroform soaked rags. That's oh, what I was trying to think oh, of. He's, he's, he was, yeah, cleaning up some yeah, chloroform soaked rags. That'll and some do fent- it. Some fentanyl, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's like D&D how you can have like poison soaked knives. It's like mm-hmm. chloroform soaked knives, so it does extra chloroform damage. Yeah. Oh, wow. It make, yeah, it gives you extra sleepy damage. Oh, yeah. that's a good thing for Derms Clerman. Nicole, write this down. That... Some people, like, it can induce a possibility of casting sleep because they just, like, dunk their sword in a vial of chloroform. Sleepy damage, yeah. Uh Like, sleepy damage, yeah. It's like Azrael, but instead of, like, a sword to make it light on fire, it just makes you real sleepy. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man then, uh, you know, gets ambushed because the girl gets a note saying, hey, we know where your real parents are. Come over here. Children, don't do this. Obviously, it's the people who just tried to kidnap you, you dunce. Yeah, yeah. So Spider-Man shows up, and then there's a primitive man, B-E-M, there. And Mm -hmm. Spider-Man is just, like, slowly crawling on the wall in one single pattern. No dipshit you get hit with the club. He just, the guy just throws it casually and Spider-Man <laughs> goes, ow. Like you were truly uh, like if you were to throw something at, like a book at a spider on the wall, how it like curls up real quick and falls to the mm, ground. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, a couple notes. Like one, for this, yeah, the scene that's like leading up into that, like where he gets beat by the primitive man. Um, He does this like really goofy, slighty, like crab walk thing. Mm-hmm. And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm, I'm just, I, I have, okay, I put this in my notes. It's uh, goofy, slidey, spidey looking crab walk, and then just slide to the left. Oh, yeah. Slide to the right. Crisscross. <laughs> like, it just looks like he's just doing this, like, weird dance. Like, For real. And I don't know how it's supposed to be stealthy. It has the look of stealthiness where he's just kind of, like, sneaking, but... Anyone could see, like, he's not uh, crouched up against a wall. He's not, like, behind any cover or anything. He's just kind of doing a weird, like, like shimmy, yeah. like, down the sidewalk. <laughs> and that's supposed to make it so no one sees him. And it doesn't work. Yeah, and it, it, it clearly doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it ends up def- that little maneuver is called the Electro Slide. Oh, wow. That's a boogie, Spider-Man boogie. villain. Yep. Nice. Wow. Nice. So then she's at the operations, the HQ of the Iron Cross Army, this girl is. And they're like, look in this mirror and tell us the future. If okay, if you're not, we're going to smash it. And Amazonas, she's already had bad luck the past 19 episodes. Now she has seven years bad luck. But yeah, wouldn't it be cooler if instead of you smash a mirror, that's seven years bad luck. It's seven beers bad luck. You will have oh, bad wow. luck until you drink seven beers. Yeah. That's a fraternity that's game. About. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's actually probably something that sh- they should do in fraternities. Like, 
I'm assuming people smash mirrors frequently, like uh, by accident. And now as a punishment, you need to drink seven beers. Is that counterproductive? Absolutely. But it's funny wordplay. And it happens so often. Yeah. (laughs) I'm all for fraternities just getting shut down entirely. But that also sounds fun. Like, not going (laughs) to lie. But I think like this would make it more lighthearted. Yeah. Like, we want lighthearted sure. fraternities, like in Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Ski school. So, uh, I don't know why all of a sudden they're at this church uh, cemetery mm-hmm. area because they, they're talking to this priest. Somehow this priest knows them. And he's saying, oh, actually, the girl you're looking for was. She died a month ago. They look Mm. similar. And then he holds up a picture and then Amazonas takes the picture of this girl. It's she's like twins. And then (laughs) she gets so angry by her own mistake. Admittedly, she says, I am disgusted by this mistake I just made. Yeah, whose and, fault is that? Yeah, whose it's fault my fault. That? However, to take out my frustrations, I'm going to kill you and your family. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, classic villain. When the primitive man, like, when he throws Spider-Man mm. fucking, like, he said, I think, 200 meters. Yeah. He was literally <laughs> in the air for a full 15 seconds, just, like, tumbling over what looked like three buildings and landed <laughs> on top of, like, a big truck. Maybe I'm just not, I'm not up to, on, you know, like all the Spider-Man, lore, but like, d- okay, does he have the ability to just not take fall damage or yeah. any sort of, uh, yeah. I, in later incantations, we've had this discussion before. He does have a healing factor. It's not as extreme as a Wolverine or a Deadpool, but it is one of his listed ability. So he's, he's I a strong see. boy. Okay. Okay. So, so. You know, fall damage isn't off per se, but he can just he can just you know kind of walk it off. <laughs> you know, he's like rolling you, yeah, like you uh, off a building and just walk it off. Uh, you know? For like every ten feet, you do like six d six after sixty feet. Uh, he's doing like d twos. Oh wow, he's yeah flipping coins about it yeah. instead of like rolling dice. I see. Yeah, one damage or two damage. Yeah. That makes sense. He's got like a heavy damage reduction bonus. Mm-hmm. I see. That's Especially good. when it comes to anything BME related. Hey. No, I'm talking about Big Mouth Entertainment, okay. David Banner. That's Incredible right. Hulk. Uh, yeah, Amazonas' wig slips in this scene where she gets punched real hard. Deserve. Primitive man is what I call my husband and his friends when the game's on. Deserve. <laughs> And then in the Uh, end, he wins and he says, oh, my heart quietly calls out for you, daddy. Wow. (laughs) He says that. You might not get the- Not not like that, but yes, he does. He does say that. Okay, he He is in a different language, (laughs) so you might not get the inflection when he's like, oh, Katja. Even though I know that's mommy, (laughs) I don't know what it is for daddy. (laughs) But that's my last note. Any more? You got anything else, Nicole? Mm, no, just that I really like this episode mm-hmm. and just like the vibes of it were really cool. And I'm wondering if like they switch directors or something because uh, I don't know. But if you like the vibe of this, better. if you like the vibe of this episode, Nicole, you want to know what you're going to love? House. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steph, we have one um, more thing to get to. Yes. All right. Spider-Man in most iterations gets bit by a radioactive spider and gives him the power or her the power, the power of a spider, you know, like approximation. He can shoot webs. He can crawl on walls, whatever. So if you were to be bit by an animal, what animal would you want to be bitten by? What powers of that animal would you then have? And how would you use it to take down the Iron Cross army? Hmm. So I, uh, it's not a two, I would say there's like two, two things, but I feel like one is a little bit of a troll, like a trolley answer. I'm going to go with a, with the actual animal. I'll go with, um, uh, I will go with a radioactive possum. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. But the other answer I was going to go with is another trans woman who is, uh, who is radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say it's prob- probably the more likely one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Another another trans woman who's more radioactive. Okay. So yeah. 
what powers would be bestowed upon you and how would you use that to take down the Iron Cross army? I would have very high level coding skills for starters. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, this is this is the trans woman uh, uh, path. Um, oh, I thought this was the possum. Oh, for the possum. Oh, oh no, well, no, for, okay, I, no, I'm no, kidding. No, possum first. Possum first. Like, no, no, I was making the joke that possums can code. Yeah, they can, though. I, I <laughs> guess. Yeah. Wow. You're right. Huh. Yeah, it would be both. It'd be both. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it then. Yeah. The high level coding. For both. All right. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And how does coding take down the Iron Cross army? Uh, I uh, I hack into their mainframe and uh, install uh, all the viruses that uh, and Bonzi like I install Bon like Bonzi body, all the like ransomware uh, stuff. Uh, I I have like a little like like a little, I code a little script that tells them that they stink every five minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, a program or switch all the BEMs to hump mode. Oh, yeah, and, like, uh, have it so uh, that if there are any sort of, like, robotics, any sort of, like, robotic, like, equipment around, Mm -hmm. like, the facility, it just randomly, like, one of them will just, like, flick you on the forehead. Ooh. Yeah. Have Professor Monster's, like, little eye thing, like, I'm guessing that gives video feed as well, just randomly make it a jump scare, like, hey, I'm looking at this computer screen, then, ah! A, like, zombie monster comes out at you. Exactly. Like, all those, like, maze game flash animation things that would, like, give you a jump scare. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I, w- I would put as many of those on there as possible. I would basically make it so they would have to solve one of the mazes before the jump scare happened. But even even after they solved it, a jump scare would happen. Yeah, and, like, a full five minutes after. Like, they're going to the bathroom now just reading a book. And out from the book pops one of these guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. It's, yeah. it's the perfect plan. It yeah. really is. Um, just really, really get in their minds uh, and just drive them a- absolutely bonkers. Yeah, and don't mm-hmm. forget Cyberpunk. Got to put that on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, have it run on startup every time they turn mm-hmm. on the computer so that way they can never get any work done. Exactly. It just com- crashes every single time. Yeah. And there we have it. That's an episode. Thank you so much, Steph, for hopping yeah, aboard. Yeah, thank you for having mm-hmm, me on. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was fun. Do you have anything to plug? Anything to plug? Well, my my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash KSBPTV. And yeah. my and uh, my Bandcamp, KSBP.bandcamp.com. Yeah! Yeah! Nicole! Follow Darling Homebody on social medias and visit darlinghomebody.com for all the cool stuff that I make. Oh, yeah. And the monthly sticker or magnet club. Hey, guys, head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. This month, it's nothing but critters, baby. Lil Corey and I are going through all five critter movies over there. I think the fifth critters movie, oh, I'm just going to, we're just going to get really stoned and watch it because that one I hear is not good at all. Not even when you see critical reviews, it's bad. Audience is also saying it's not that fun, but maybe, maybe if we're stoned, we'll like it. Maybe we'll just do a watch along, Lil Corey and I. So be on the lookout for that every single Friday this March. We've recorded already the first and second. I'm loving this series. I'm so pumped for the third and fourth because those ones I remember very little about. So go check that out. Patreon.com forward slash MLM pod. But if you'd like to hop it up to a $10 patron, you get monthly exclusive content as well. Last or this month, actually. Sean and I watched Vampiro's second movie called The Dead Don't Sleep, directed by the same guy who directed Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. And boy, oh boy, (laughs) it's just a good movie. They're like... (laughs) <laughs> it, we we were kind of upset by it, but we were glad we were watching a good movie. Vampiro is so fucking good in it. He like he's sober in it. We know that, but he he's pulling from his own past, uh, being a, a drug addict in this. It's fucking great. Two thumbs up to it. The dead sleep easy. 
That's what you get. We discuss it. it that's straight to Patreon. And those $10 patrons get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those, starting with Steve F., Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, the Waz, Orion, Jordan B, the Chaos, which my Bickle brother in common law, Joshua, Jakus, Steve Barnes, a sweet child of time, and Intro Void, my mother, Lil Corey's BFF, and now former roommate Shane, that fed, twitch.tv forward slash core winning. It's Corwin from This Movie's Gay, and from the ROM complex, as well as formulaic, a podcast in script writing, it's twitch.tv forward slash R2 Shelby 2. Oh, and the dragon and the monster, Dragon Boy Suede, Marshland Monster, new album coming out April 19th, baby. Yeah. Will we get Howard on this? If everyone listening right now tweets or on TikTok messages at Howard Kramer, maybe it will happen. Maybe he'll hop on a board or I just ask him when I guest on Who Charted. And if you're not listening to Who Charted, go check that out wherever we're listening to this. You can listen to that. All right. I've been James. I'm Nick. Cool. I've been Steph. And we've been Mostly Speaking Spider-Man. Bye-bye. This has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today. Oh, yeah.